By the end of this video, you'll be able to use this sequencer, which is also known as a timeline, to create any animation that you want, like basically activating your spaceship and animating the stormtroopers to walk towards it. Look at this. Super cool. See you guys in the video. What, what is up, beautiful, beautiful people? We are here at chapter 17 and we are going to talk about animation. This is going to be one of the most important chapters of this Unreal Engine tutorial series. So yes. let's right get into it. <laughs> let's get right into it. <laughs> That's good. But do you know, we've actually said every chapter is the most important chapter up until now. <laughs> it is very important. We chose the most important topic. <laughs> yeah. But we're just trying to make sure you guys understand yeah. the importance of every chapter. Okay, enough, enough, enough. Okay. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about animation. But before we do that, let's look at the stormtroopers. Mm. Right after the previous chapter, we closed Unreal Engine and opened it again. And that caused our console variables to reset again. Yes. So what we have to do is we have to paste the same command in our console variable again. So we have it here saved, right? We're going to leave it in the description box below again. So you guys can go ahead and just copy Boom. and paste now. Fixed. There is a way you can make sure that this doesn't reset every time. You can create presets of console variables, let's say like 10 of them, and just have them apply every time you open the engine. We're going to be talking about that in one of the final chapters, which is render settings and console commands. So make sure you check that one out too. For now, let's move into animation. Now, animation has to do with objects in motion because currently, if you look closely to our scene, there's absolutely nothing moving. So we have no animation. And at the end of the day, we're doing all of this cinematics because we want things to move. Am I right? Yes. Okay, cool. So if you want things to move, you need to know at zero seconds... Where is that specific object? And at three seconds, where is it now? Is it moving? Is it going forward? Is it going backwards? We need to have a timeline. So if you've edited videos before, Fire, you've done it like videos before, yes, right? Yes, of course. Da Vinci? Yes. Right? So in Da Vinci, you have a timeline. Yes. Right? Premiere, you have yes. a timeline. Here, we don't have a timeline. We have so a sequencer. Absolutely. But a timeline and a sequencer work exactly the same way, right? Yes. So how can we go ahead and bring the sequencer or the timeline. From now on, we're going to refer to the timeline as a sequencer. So in order to add a sequencer, we are going to go to this drop down right here, and then we're going to click on add level sequence. It's going to prompt us to create a folder or save it somewhere in our content drawer. And we're going to do exactly that. We're going to create a new folder called it sequencer. And because per level, you can have multiple sequencers. That's why I recommend you open up a new folder just allocate it towards sequencers. So for instance, you can have one sequencer, one timeline for the jet door opening, and then you can have another one where Darth Vader is talking to the, the stormtroopers on the other side of the spaceship, right? Just different timelines. So we're going to call this spaceship door opening. Yeah. Beautiful naming. <laughs> opening. Okay, cool. The moment you go ahead and save your sequencer, you'll notice that you'll have the sequencer docked in the bottom part of your screen. And it's consisting of three parts. You have these drop downs up here, which control some of the settings. On the left side, you're going to have access to all of the objects that are going to be animated. And on the right side, you're going to see their animations. So we're going to go ahead and start with a simple object and try to animate it. Farhad, what object should we go for? Well, let's add a sphere. Okay. And beside. then what sort of animation do we want to do? Okay, let's put them beside the jet fighters. And then let's shoot it all the way to the spaceship. Okay, so can we pretend as if this is one of the droids? Yeah, we can do that. R2-D2. Yeah, and it's just like rolling. Is it? Yes. And it's not R2-D2. What about the new one? Which one is the new one? The new one in the new series. The one that is actually spherical. Oh, I don't know the name of that one. Okay, anyways. So this one, what we want to do, as Farhad said, we want to go ahead and start on the left side, and we want to go all the way to the right side. So if you've ever worked in any editing software, then you would know that you have to use keyframes. And keyframes basically are snapshots in time that say, at this specific second, at this specific frame, these are the properties of my object. So first things first, we need to add our object into our sequencer. There's multiple ways you can do that. Farhad, can you tell us what is one of the ways you can do it? One of the ways is click that track plus button and on, the add, yes. but like the add icon. Yes. And then the track. Yes. So, and then? And then you could see actor to sequencer. Okay. The first one. So we have all of these different things that we can add. For example, we can add an audio track. But as Farhad said, we want to go ahead and bring an actor, right? Remember when we merged actors, right? Your objects can also be called actors. So actor to sequencer. 
And the object that is selected will be automatically appearing on top of our list. If we didn't, we can search it. We can search it here. So sphere, yeah. right? Which is the same one at the top. If you've noticed now, multiple times within Unreal Engine 5, if you have an object selected, it's going to pop into the other sections when you're trying to call it, right? So always try to select the objects you want to call. And then at the top, it's add sphere. Okay, we're going to hit it. Now we got it over there. Now we got it over there. I'm going to delete this no. really quickly. And it's asking me, do you want to delete this? Are you sure? Yes, we do. Farah, what is another way I can bring in the object? I think you deleted the sphere. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's why it was asking <laughs> me if you're sure. Sorry. Do not delete the sphere. Don't have the sphere selected here. You just want to select it here in the sequencer and then delete it from here. Actually, that's a good problem to yeah. have because you guys have to understand the difference. Sorry, I had to read the error message. Okay, Farhad, what is another way I can drag the sphere in here? Drag and drop. Absolutely. So I have the sphere selected. I can drag it from the outliner and drop it into Boop. my sequencer just like that. So two different ways you can bring in the objects. Track, actor to sequencer, or drag and drop. So once you have your character here, as you notice, what your actor, we have the name right here called sphere. And then underneath it, we have transform. Do you remember where else we had transform? In the details panel. Absolutely. So it will consist of your location, rotation, and scale. And you can animate any of these parameters. Absolutely. And these are not the only things we can animate. The reason why the plus icons exist on the right side is because you have more options. Now, they're kind of complicated, and we're going to touch on them in a moment. But for now, just wanted to let you know that you can explore them later on. So for now, let's just go ahead and talk about location, because we want to move the sphere. So at zero frames, this is in frames by the way. So we're talking about zero frames. And if you go all the way to the end, I'm just dragging my timeline right now and just looking all the way. I can go all the way up to 150 frames. That's because we are 30 frames per second, that's five seconds. Absolutely. So this is 150 frames. That means our render stops right here. If I want to go ahead and actually pull this longer, I can go ahead and just drag this I think it's red, I'm colorblind, yeah. but that marker is basically defining how long our animation will be. So I can just leave it at any specific number I want. Um, and then I can go back to the beginning of my frames, which is zero by clicking this button. And what I want to do is I want to say, okay, at zero frames, I want to go ahead and keyframe this. Exactly this position is going to be where I want to be at zero seconds and zero frames. So I can go ahead and hit the plus icon. There's another plus icon right here, as you can see, beside every one of these parameters, which means hit and enter a keyframe. The shortcut for it is enter. Literally, as soon as you bring your mouse here and click on the timeline, you can hit enter to enter some keyframes or alternatively, control Z for undo. You can go ahead and manually click any of these. Now, if you go ahead and click the enter on or, or this button on transform, it's going to create a keyframe for scale, rotation, and location if you're changing all of those variables. But in this case, we're not. So we're only going to be doing the keyframe for location. So hit this exact button right here. We have the keyframe. We can zoom in by control scroll and zoom out by control scroll as well. And if you need to move around the timeline, the way you can do that is by hitting right click and dragging yourself just like in the material graph. Do you yeah. remember that? Yep. Perfect. So Farhad, what should we do next now that we want to bring this guy over here? So let, let's go to our final frame. For okay. example, 150 is so, our final frame. No, it's not. I pulled it. I pulled it out. So, so you, you, can, go have to it, the, you if, can have it at 150, right? If I want to have it exactly at 150, I can use this number right mm -hmm. here. So this number is defining the current frame we have our marker on. So I want to go to 150, as Farhad said. So 150. To be precise, okay, and where do I want to land? And we want to move the sphere all the way to the box right in front. So now we have three ways of doing that. We can, well, go ahead and drag this guy right here. Control Z. We can go ahead and use these sliders as we learned before. Drag it right here. Or we can even do the same change within the sequencer. So I'm going to drop down my location. I'll see my X, Y, and Z just like I do here. Same values. And I can use these sliders and drag it across here. Farad, are we good with this? Yes. Okay. So the advantage of using the sliders within the sequencer is that it automatically makes the keyframe for you. So you can see that I have now two keyframes with a line connecting in between. If I go ahead and pull my marker all the way back and press space, I can see the Whoa. animation. <laughs> now, I'm going to hit space again to pause, and then I'm going to hit Control-Z so that I undo. If I were to use the arrow, 
I'll have to manually enter the keyframe because it still doesn't know if I'm done, right? Or the same thing here. So if you do that, make sure you go ahead and hit enter on the location, okay? Select it. Or you can also go to transform, remember, to put the keyframe for everything. It's up to you. So at this point, we have done this animation. And you also notice that you can see and visualize the path upon which the sphere will travel. And you can see it clearly. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and make some more changes to my animation. Farhad, what kind of changes can we make? We can maybe scale the sphere while it's go all the way to the... Spaceship? Absolutely. So that's very simple, right? We can go all the way to the beginning and say, hey, I have my scale at one. So let's go ahead and keyframe that. Yeah. Or maybe actually this time around, let's inverse it. I want to start at, I want to stop at one. So I want my scale to be this at the very end. So I'll go to my next keyframe. Now, this is actually a very good lesson. There's multiple ways. You can go ahead and control scroll and eyeball where your next keyframe is if you want to be exact. Or this is going to come in real handy. These arrow buttons beside the keyframe are actually saying, go to the next keyframe, wherever that is. So right now, this keyframe is on my location, right? So I want to go to the next keyframe. I'm going to hit this arrow, and it's going to exactly land on where I want to scale. So I'm going to say, I want this to be one. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the keyframe button on my scale. And I'm going to go all the way back with this button to frame zero. And I want to say, I want to start at zero. 0.1. So, 0 0.1? Okay, yeah. 0 0.1. So I'm going to hit 0 0.1 for this. And then I'm going to click that, control C, and then paste it into the Y and Z as well. And right now we can see our sphere is extremely small. And if we hit space, look at what happens. Whoa. We're scaling. Beautiful. Now that we have this specific animation, we can go ahead and make more changes using a graph. If you come from other 3D software, you'll be familiar with this. But you can imagine when you have a human walking and you want to be really precise with the way the animation is working per bone of the animation, you're going to need to work with a graph. And the way you access that graph is right here with this button. So if you go ahead and press this, we'll see now that we have the sphere. And then if you click that, we'll see the actual graph that is demonstrating to us the motion of the sphere. Now, don't be intimidated by this. We'll explain to you exactly how it works. So first thing we're going to do is drop down the transform. And then we know that we're working with location and scale, right? So technically, if you were to click rotation, look at what happens. We're just seeing a flat line. Nothing which means, happens, nothing changes. Exactly. So if you worked with graphs before on both scales, nothing is actually happening. But if you go to our location and drop it down, technically we're moving in one axis, right? So technically two of our axes should have no changes. And that should be our Z because we're not moving up and down in space. And our Y because we're not going left and right. Well, left and right from where I'm looking. But if you look at our X, we'll actually notice the movement we're making in the X axis. So sometimes, depending on how big that movement is, your graph might not even, the, the beginning and the end might not fit. So let's say that's the case. You can use this button right here to go to a normalized view, which is going to bring everything between 0 and 1. So it's going to compress all those values so that you can visualize the beginning and end of your graph. So honestly... This might be confusing, if, again, if it's, this is your first time, but it's really not that difficult. Pay close attention. We're saying this is our sphere. Okay, I'm looking at it right now. And this is at the very beginning. This is its location in the x-axis. So I'll go to the very beginning using this button. And I can now move this to change where it begins. Quite simply, right? And also, I can do the same thing if I go all the way to the end. And then I find my sphere. So this graph is just defining where it is. So I can just move this. So this is just playing with these values that we keyframed earlier on. So you can be really precise with your movements. So I can just come here and say, okay, I want it to land exactly in front of the door, which is right here. What if I want to change the speed of the ball? That's a very good question. I want it to start accelerating much faster, but at the end, I want it to be really, really slow. Okay, cool. That's a very good question. And we're going to do just that. Because right now, if you take a look at our graph, what this, what this basically shape is telling us is that we're starting slow, right? We're starting flat, and then we're increasing our speed over time. And then as we come closer to our end, we're also slowing down again. 
we're slowing down again. So Farad is saying you want to speed up quickly yep. in the beginning, right? Yep. You don't want to speed up or you want to start with a high speed. Yes. Okay. So if you want to start with a high speed, you want to go ahead and change these points. Because right now, if I were to change these points, I can only drag it down, which works. But if I want to go ahead and make it larger or smaller, I can. I can make it faster. Sure, that works. But if you want to have full control over this, you can select both keyframes, go to this arrow right here, and then change to weighted tangents. These are just different ways the points can be treated. So weighted tangents in Unreal Engine allow us to fully control these handles. They work extremely similar to the rig rail of our camera. If you remember how we were controlling the handles, same thing here. So I can say, okay, I want to pull this all the way up. So this is going to start real slow and then shoot real fast. Check this out, real slow and then super fast and then stop. This shape is basically showing us that. Or as Farhad said, we want to start super fast and then go slow. Am I right? So yeah. This is precisely that. So check it out. I'm going to hit G to remove the overlays and I'm going to press play. Did you see that? Wow. Did you see that? Yep. Okay. Boom. Just like that. We controlled it. Okay. So we can go ahead and do the exact same thing with basically our scale. So we're going back to our scale. We change all the X, Y, and Z. So if I'm unhappy with how small it is, I can click all three. And now I'm basically looking at all three. I can just go ahead and drag this guy. I'm, I'm not happy with how small it is. I want it to be bigger. And actually, I'm going to zoom out, control, scroll. This is my end. This is my one, right? I'm going to bring this. I want this to be bigger in the beginning. So it's actually much bigger like that, and then it's going to get smaller. So check this out. Press play. Boom, boom, just like that. And now we're going to go ahead and hit save and exit the graph. Now, guys, the graph itself can take an entire course. And we're not trying to teach you just the graph. We just wanted to teach you guys the basics so that you know how to make changes to your animation. Let's animate now something for real. Let's animate the door of the spaceship. Okay. So when it comes to animating the door of the spaceship, Farhad, to be very honest with you, this is going to be much easier because technically we're not really changing anything. We're not making the animation ourselves. The animation's there. We just have to call it. So from your experience, how do we call the animation? First, what do we need to do? First, we need to bring the spaceship to our Sequencer. Hold up. Did you guys know you can speed up your workflow by using Polycam's photogrammetry instead of modeling and texturing? Yeah, you just snap a couple of photos and voila. Plus, your objects will automatically look photorealistic because they're actually real. Shout out to Polycam for sponsoring this course and giving you guys 30% off their pro plan. Promo code and link in the description. So Farad, how can I go ahead and add this spaceship into my sequencer? It's very easy. Select the spaceship. Uh-huh. Click plus track, uh -huh. actor to sequencer, and you will see it up there. Perfect. Oh, why do we have an animation row right above transform? Well, the sphere didn't have it. No. This time we do have it because, first of all, this is a skeletal mesh. So it's bound to have an animation because it has armatures. And Unreal Engine knows that. Therefore, we have the animation layer. Now, all we have to do is go to the plus icon. Remember, we told you guys the plus icons always have more compartments. Check it out. We have the plus icon, and we can already see the animation that belongs to this armature. And we're going to hit it. And just like that, we see a little bit of a change to our spaceship because it just went to frame zero of its animation. Now, we can go ahead and press anywhere on our sequencer to make sure we select it. It wouldn't work if you select our viewport. Press your sequencer and hit space to watch the magic happen. But Faraz, I want to play only the last seconds of the animation. Yeah, it is kind of weird right now because we're starting with the wings inside the floor. And so the way we can fix this, as Farhad mentioned, is to just pull this back. It's as simple as dragging it and bringing oh. the animation before frame zero so we don't see it ever. So we're going to go to frame zero and then just pull this back to maybe just just right here before no, these guys the land. Legs, the legs are in the air. Yes. Okay. Right so there. here. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So now if we hit space, look at what happens. So at the beginning of our animation, we're going to see the doors of the spaceship Ooh, open. Perfect. And that is beautiful. Amazing. That now, is wonderful. Let's animate our stormtroopers. Okay. Very cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this sphere because we don't need that anymore. We have the, 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 the spaceship right now animated. 
And the next thing we want to do is animate our stormtroopers. So here, what do we have to do? First of all, we have to go ahead and bring in a stormtrooper skeletal mesh. Remember, the ones we have in the army right now are static mesh. So we can't animate them. Nope. We can't we can't have animations on their bones because they don't have bones. We can move them, but they're gonna move like a statue. So we're gonna go to control space. We're gonna find our stormtroopers. And as I told you guys before, as my default, I always like to bring in the skeletal mesh, which has no animation attached to it. And once you have your skeletal mesh, all you have to do is Add it to your sequencer. Yes. Add it to your sequencer. Pay attention, sorry, Padawan. Sorry. Pay attention. Sorry. Okay. So we're going to drag this T-Pose animation, that's the name of it, into our sequencer. And as soon as it's there, again, it's we a skeletal did. mesh, so we have the animation layer. So if I click the plus button now, I should see all the animation that we brought from Mixamo. Yes. So the more animations you have, the more choices you will have here. Okay. And it's really as simple as just choosing the animation you want. So Let's choose walking. One walking, absolutely. And let's see what happens. So if I just hit the sequencer and press space. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. So there's a couple of problems that we need to solve. Number one, it's walking in place, but that's precisely what we want, if you remember. But the second problem is that the animation is extremely short. We need to loop it. So by default, the best thing about Mixmo is that these animations, the walking animations, are loopable. All you have to do is just repeat them. And repeating them in Unreal Engine 5 is really simple. All you have to do is drag the timeline of your animation. So we're just going to go ahead and pull this back. So we start from frame 0. So it's going to snap. And at frame 0, we have the walking animation. Now all we have to do is just go ahead to our walking animation and just pull this top layer which controls the entire animation as long as we want. And we're going to see the loops happen with these vertical lines. But if you go over them, you'll notice that there's no jittery movement. There's no snapping. It's looping perfectly. So we can make him walk for miles without noticing any breaks. So we're going to pull this all the way until the end of our animation. Uh, timeline, and then we're going to hit space and see it. But we need now our store trooper to move from point A to point B. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And it's just going to be about you eyeballing it and just knowing one trick in the sequencer, which we're going to teach you right now. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go all the way back. We're going to rotate this guy because we want him to be moving towards the spaceship. Yes. Right? So we're going to rotate him on the Z axis for 90 degrees and we're going to have one of these guys here i'm going to bring this guy over here and i want to duplicate this guy because i want two of them and we're going to bring this guy over here okay this guy will have no animation right now because he's not in the sequencer we're going to worry about him later i just wanted to have him there so starting with the first guy right he is starting from here and we want him to move to here so very similar to our sphere we need to go ahead and animate his location on the x-axis we already know that so we're going to pull down the transform and then we're going to go to location and on the x-axis we're going to drop a keyframe and then we're going to move all the way to here where the door has opened and then we're going to say i want you to move to the right side here so we're just going to go ahead and use maybe the arrow just so i can be precise where, where i want to go and then i'm going to Go ahead and hit the keyframe button one more time. The keyframe is created and I can see the line connecting them. Now let's go ahead and play this back and see how it looks. It's probably not going to look good. Press space. Oh my God. It feels like those escalators in the airport. When you right. Walk yeah, in front yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels exactly yes. the same way. So there's a couple of problems. Number one, if you notice, the sliding is happening, which is because the movement in the x-axis is far more than the amount that he's walking, right? It's not compensating for it. So we need to change that. But the second problem is that... Farad, I do, I, do you know this second problem, actually? I think because the animation is easing in and easing out, we need a uniform motion because he's yes. walking in uniform speed. Actually, that is true. So he's not starting to walk and he's not stopping at the very end. He's walking for the entire animation. So which means it's weird to have him start slower and end slower and accelerate in the middle. We need a constant motion. And in order to do that, the shortcut for it is 
us changing the points. So remember how we changed to weighted tangents in the graph editor to basically control it? Well, right now it's easy and ease out, which I believe the shortcut for that, the name for it is auto, but we want to change it to linear. Linear means it's going to be constant Beautiful. motion. So we're just going to do what we did in the graph editor, but instead we're going to do it here in the sequencer. We're going to select both of these points, right click on them, and then we can see the key interpolation options. So remember, we had the weighted tangents over there, which we can access inside there. For some reason, the name is not here, but we can actually just read this. So by default, you're on cubic auto. This is your ease in and ease out. We want to change it to linear. If we change it to linear, which is represented by that triangle, we're going to see that it's changing, right? The shape changes. And let's look at what happens to the movement. It's moving at a constant speed, and then it stops, right? It's perfect. This is precisely what we want. If you change it to something like constant, constant means there's no motion between. It's just one and zero. So look at what happens. Constant means it's going to stay there. And then at the next keyframe, it just jumps to the next one. Boom. So different key interpolations means different motions. So just remember that you can play with these. We're going to go back to linear. And now we need to fix our sliding. So as you can see, it's sliding forward, which means it's moving too much. So I need to go ahead and maybe either pull the end back or pull the front forward. And I'm going to pull the front forward because I want him to stop here. So I'm going to have him start somewhere here. And then I'm going to go ahead and press the keyframe again to update the keyframe at frame zero. And let's see that. Farad, Much better. But it's still sliding. Still a bit. Okay. So let's go back and let's have him start here maybe. And I don't need to press the keyframe because I use the, the actual keyframes in the sequencer. Oh, much sliding. better. Uh, still sliding, Stand still bit. sliding, little still bit, sliding. Little bit. Okay, let's try this. Okay. Still sliding, still sliding. Is it? Yes, I just a bit. It. Okay, now it should be perfect. Yes. 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 Look at him. His foot is stuck okay. to the ground. Okay, amazing. That is fantastic. Now, I don't like the fact that my animation is going for so long. I'm going to end my animation right here when he reaches the end and when the door opens. So check it out. One more time from the beginning. Let's check it out. Wow. Wow. Congratulations, guys. You have animated the door of the spaceship and animated the stormtrooper. Now, Farhad, what I want to do is go ahead and do the exact same thing for the other stormtrooper. Now, there is a way to make this faster. Show me. Okay. So we can actually go ahead and copy his motion onto this stormtrooper. So we'll go to his animation, right click, and we're going to hit copy. And then we're going to go and bring this guy to our sequencer because he doesn't exist there. So we can go ahead and drag him and drop him right here. He has the animation layer, but it has nothing. So let's try to go ahead and right click and paste animation and see what happens. So look at that. Oh, can we copy the transform as well? Absolutely, we can. So right now we have already copied the motion. And now we're going to go to our transform right here. We're going to go ahead and right click, copy. And then we're going to go to our transform down here. And we're going to go hit it, right click and paste. Now, if you play this, look at what happens. We have a slight problem. And the reason that's happening is because we have two transform layers. We have the old one and the new one. Check it out. We have one transform at the top here. It's being blocked by this 61 items. I wish I could hide it. But basically, there's one transform layer here and the new one that we pasted. All you need to do is just go ahead and delete the old one to have the transform work correctly. So delete it with backspace or delete. And then if you go back and play this, you're not going to notice the second stormtrooper because he's actually hidden. Not hidden. It's right. <laughs> They're all on right, top of each other. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're on top of each other. So what? Okay, that sounds wrong. But what we need to do is go ahead and just separate them. So if you go ahead and click the second stormtrooper, technically, there's no animation on the Y axis. So if I were to open this up, in the y-axis, if you notice, there's no keyframe. So all I have to do is just pull this guy to the other side. Amazing. Right? I don't even need to press any keyframe because I have not said change the y-axis. It's from a constant this point. y, yeah. Yeah, it's just the same y. So all I have to do is just pull him to the side, and it's going to be the exact same animation if I play it. So I'm going to go here, play this, and check this But this is a bit out. odd. We never have exact animations. Can we have some offset on one of them? Yes, you're absolutely right, because they're, they're precisely yes. the same, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. It's very simple, honestly. First of all, we can just go ahead and have this guy, right? 
start with a bit of a different offset on the animation. So if you go ahead and look at the animation layer for this guy, it starts precisely at zero. We can just pull this animation so this guy is maybe walking yes. with the other foot. Or maybe he's like somewhere in the middle. Let's play like it that, now. Something like that. And then if you play it, their position is the same. Yes, now it's much more natural. Yes, but they're walking differently. Yes. Right? Yes, much more natural. This is perfect. This is so cool. Congratulations, guys. You have animated the door of the spaceship and also the stormtroopers. Wow. So you basically learned the basics of animation and you now know how to use the sequencer to move anything in your scene. In the next chapter, we are going to set up our shots, the shots that are going to make our cinematics. Are we ready? I'm absolutely ready because this is where we take everything we learned and then go ahead and pour it all to create this dope video. So see you guys in the next chapter. Ciao. Ciao.